Neuromuscular Respiratory Failure A 65-year-old woman with a history of ALS presents to the clinic with a three-month history of daytime sleepiness, difficulty sleeping at night, shortness of breath with exertion, and morning headaches. She reports waking frequently at night and occasionally gasping for breath. She feels fatigued during the day and has started taking a nap in the afternoon. On examination, she is breathing comfortably on room air and her oxygen saturation is greater than 95%. Lung sounds are clear to auscultation and she is not using accessory muscles of respiration. She has slurred speech along with atrophy, weakness, increased reflexes, and fasciculations in the upper extremities, but the remainder of her physical exam is unremarkable. Reviewing her chart, you notice she recently underwent pulmonary function testing. Here are the results. Forced vital capacity is 40% predicted. FEV1 over FBC, 90%. Maximum inspiratory pressure, negative 40 centimeters of H2O. Maximum expiratory pressure, 30 centimeters of H2O. What are your recommendations? Neuromuscular disorders include a wide range of diseases that affect the peripheral nerves, neuromuscular junction, or muscle. Some of these diseases can affect the respiratory system, which leads to neuromuscular respiratory insufficiency and failure. A number of neuromuscular diseases cause weakness in respiratory muscles through a variety of mechanisms at different levels of the peripheral nervous system. This image shows the locations along the motor pathway from the central nervous system through the peripheral nervous system where pathology can lead to respiratory weakness. Amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, ALS, leads to respiratory weakness via dysfunction of the anterior horn cells. Myasthenia gravis can cause respiratory insufficiency by its effects on the neuromuscular junction, and the chain muscular dystrophy weakens the respiratory muscles directly. The clinical presentation of respiratory muscle weakness ranges from being asymptomatic in the early stages to severe respiratory failure in the late stages. Despite having abnormal pulmonary function testing, patients can be completely asymptomatic at first. The first symptoms a patient typically experiences are sleep disturbances manifesting as shorter sleep time, frequent awakenings, shallow breathing, daytime fatigue, and morning headaches. Patients experience these symptoms more often in their sleep because of reduced respiratory drive, particularly during REM, rapid eye movement sleep, when muscle atonia is present. In later stages, Patients start to experience difficulty breathing in the daytime and eventually progress to respiratory failure. An important concept is that the primary problem caused by neuromuscular respiratory weakness is hypoventilation. The lack of adequate respiratory muscle contraction hinders the physical movement of air in and out of the lungs, resulting in abnormal gas exchange and a restrictive physiology. Pyrometry is an essential tool used to quantify the degree of neuromuscular respiratory insufficiency. Common findings include reduced maximum inspiratory pressure, MIP, maximum expiratory pressure, MEP, and forced vital capacity, FVC. Current guidelines for management of patients with neuromuscular respiratory weakness recommend using non-invasive ventilatory support early in the disease course. This improves pulmonary mechanics, helps rest fatigued muscles, and improves sleep architecture. This intervention has been shown to improve quality of life and prolong survival in patients with ALS. It is important to recognize several contraindications in treatment of neuromuscular respiratory failure. Treatment with oxygen alone is ineffective because ventilation is a primary problem. Supplemental oxygen by itself may actually worsen hypoventilation by decreasing hypoxic ventilatory drive. Continuous positive airway pressure, CPAP, is also relatively contraindicated in neuromuscular disorders. It provides the same level of pressure during inhalation and exhalation, which increases the work of breathing and could lead to worsened fatigue in weak muscles. Instead, bi-level respiratory assist devices are used. These provide higher pressure during inspiration 
and lower pressure during expiration, which improves movement of air in and out of the lungs. In summary, current treatment guidelines for respiratory insufficiency and neuromuscular disorders include non-invasive ventilatory support, sleeping semi-upright, taking measures to reduce aspiration risk, and treating excessive oral secretions. Now, we understand this patient is experiencing symptoms related to sleep hypoventilation. Based on the history, physical exam, and pulmonary function testing, it is recommended that she begin non-invasive bi-level positive pressure ventilatory support. It is crucial that we recognize the initial symptoms of hypoventilation to prevent delays in treatment. By doing so, we can improve the patient quality of life and survival. For more information on neuromuscular respiratory failure, including an article reviewing the efficacy of non-invasive ventilation, please see the course resources. For more information on this and other neurologic conditions, please visit aan.com slash neurobytes.